another vlog so i'm officially back home in vegas for winter break which means lots of good food lots of spending time with family so i'll be eating out a lot and i'll be taking you guys with me as i show you guys some amazing food i'll be trying so yeah without further ado let's get right into the video today i went to the bacchanal buffet at caesar's palace this is the first time I'm going to the Bacchanal. I'm super hungry, so I'm ready for some good food. Wow. <laughs> it's $80 and 96 cents. It's $80 per person, which is quite pricey, but this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to have this kind of experience, so I'm really excited regardless. Upon walking in, guys, there's so many food options. I'm already freaking overwhelmed. Even the desserts have their own little island. Like, what the heck? But basically, I'm giving you guys a little tour of everything I could capture. My main objective going here is not to eat to my money's worth, but rather to eat the stuff that I like because I'm personally a carbs girl. I'm not really into like steaks and seafoods and stuff, so I'll be trying more carby foods because that's the kind of shit i like even though people might say well that's a waste of money but like that's what makes me happy this is my first plate i got some kind of puff pastry with caviar on top and then some double yeah. eggs so nice. and then this is some bone marrow with a piece of bread First, I tried the bone marrow and oh my gosh, it's absolutely amazing. I personally really love bone marrow as a kid because it's so fatty and juicy. So they give you a little piece of crostini on the side to spread the bone marrow on. And the combination is absolutely heavenly. It was a perfect bite. And then I tried the caviar puff pastry and wow, this is so good. The pastry skin is light and puffy and has a rich creamy and cheesy filling inside. It's not too salty, but the flavor of the caviar on top was absolutely the highlight of this dish. It was really good. Then I tried the deviled egg and wow, I gotta say that it's a really good deviled egg. So rich and so creamy, but it's also balanced off by the sharpness of the little piece of pickle on top. For my second plate, I grabbed a cranberry orange mimosa, an apple brie pizza, pork lumpia with chili sauce, fried balls on a skewer, and a sesame ball. First, I took a sip of the cranberry orange mimosa, and wow, it's really good. I tried the apple brie pizza, so this is a pizza topped with apple and brie cheese and toasted pecans, and oh my gosh, it's absolutely an incredible combination. We have the sweetness of the baked apple, savory and creamy cheese but it's not too salty the crunch of the pecans adds another dimension of flavor to this pizza and the bread is thick and fluffy and artisan i love myself a thick crust then i tried the pork lumpia with chili sauce oh my god the chili sauce is so good Crispy on the outside and the pork is juicy and tender. But then dipping into the chili sauce, guys, that was a game changer. That chili sauce perfectly complements the juicy pork. It adds another dimension of flavor. I can't even describe how good it is. Then I tried these fried balls on a skewer. I'm not sure what kind of meatballs they are. It seems like some kind of vegetarian dish because I can't taste no meat inside. It's pretty good. I mean, it's crispy and pretty salty outer shell but then the interior is soft and fluffy but i don't know what's inside finally i tried the sesame ball because i always get sesame balls at buffets i just like it moving on to my third plate i got some mini churros a peach and ricotta crostini smoked duck pizza and a tuna pokey at first i tried the mini churros and wow i really love this churro it's a good ass churro. It's better than the Costco churro for sure. However, I still think Disneyland has the best churros of all time. But anyways, this churro is not too doughy. It's extremely crispy and fresh, but the surprise is it's actually filled with some kind of custard cream that kind of tastes like condensed milk. It's so good. 
Then I try the peach and ricotta crostini. Oh wow, it's fun. It's okay. It's like light and sweet, but it's definitely more for the aesthetics. Like a good looking little appetizer. Then I try the smoked duck pizza and oh my gosh, I absolutely love this dish so much. Mm. Oh, this is so good. It's so strong and so rich and savory and the meat is flavorful and very well marinated. Like, it is a savory, well marinated, flavorful piece of meat on a thick and light fluffy crust. However, I will say it's a little too rich and I'll need to take a couple sip of my coke. Finally, I tried the tuna pokey. I think I'm unlucky because I got one that barely has any tuna on top, but the flavor is still there. The fish is so fresh and tender, it just melts in your mouth. And then this crispy thing on top, I don't know what it is, but it does add to the presentation, the aesthetics, and gives a nice little crunchy texture to the whole thing. Before moving on to my fourth plate, I tried a bite of my sister's risotto. Upon first bite, it is insanely flavorful. The melt in your mouth, beef pieces, the strong parmesan cheese. It's so creamy and savory and cheesy. It has a lot of parmesan flavor. But considering how rich it is, I couldn't take more than a few bites. I need some coke to wash it down. For my fourth plate, I got a walnut raisin bread with truffle butter, shumai, meat lover's pizza, roasted duck, Thai beef stir fry, caprice salad, and then an ube ochata. First, I tried the walnut raisin bread dipped in the truffle butter, and wow, I'm a carbs girl, I need my bread, and this bread is pretty spot on. It's a cold bread, but it's still chewy, it's pretty good. It has that burst of raisin and walnut in between that's like, hmm, what a nice surprise, you know? And the butter is very flavorful, it definitely has a strong truffle flavor. Then I tried the shumai, it's a good shumai. It's very juicy and tender and fresh. And then I tried the meat lover's pizza, and even though it's called meat lover's, I I can only see pepperoni on top, so I'm a little confused, but I like myself a good pepperoni pizza, you know, like a nice little marinara sauce with cheese and pepperoni, like the classic, you know? I don't really taste the marinara sauce though, that's the only thing. It's more like cheese and pepperoni on bread, but the bread is really good. It's that fresh artisan thick crust bread. Ube horchata. And then I took a sip of the ube horchata, and wow, it's very, very sweet. So sweet. Very cinnamony, so rich and creamy. It's more like a dessert drink. I tried the roasted duck, and wow, it's better than most restaurant ducks in the dim sum restaurant. It has a crispy skin, has a fatty and tender and juicy meat. Oh my gosh, I was so surprised. Because usually buffet ducks are like mediocre, but this one is actually really high quality and really good. And then I tried this Thai beef stir fry. It's very flavorful, it's sweet, it has slightly spicy flavor, but it's nothing too extraordinary. Then I tried this vegan pot sticker that was filled with mushrooms and vegetables and honestly, I'm not a fan. I mean, vegan foods are usually not that promising, like I'm sorry, it's just facts. Finally, I ended with a bite of the caprice salad. It's made out of mini mozzarella balls and cherry tomatoes. It's so cute! And on top of like balsamic glaze, like olive oil, salt and pepper and all that kind of stuff, you know? Now it's time to try some of the desserts, which I'm extremely excited about because that's like my favorite part about buffets. Dessert freedom, you know? So I took a tour of the dessert island and there's so many options to choose from. I don't even know which one I should pick because I know the flavor fatigue of the sweetness is going to hit very soon. For my fifth plate, I got some chocolate lava cake, an egg tart, a lemon tart, some ice cream, and a blueberry cheesecake. First, I tried the chocolate lava cake and oh my gosh, this is the best dessert I've had today. The cake is all warmed up with the thickest gooeyest chocolate ganache. It's like eating melted chocolate. And the cake itself is also not too doughy. It's crispy on the outside and the proportion slash ratio of the cake to the ganache is just perfect. Oh, if you're a chocolate lover, you're going to be absolutely head over heels over this dessert. And then I try the egg tart. It's a good egg tart. The custard is good. It's sweet and soft, but like really, really sweet though. Mm. That's a good egg tart. The crust is not the flakiest. It's a good egg tart again. I'm not gonna like nitpick on it. And then I tried the ice cream, so I got a scoop of the creme brulee. 
and a scoop of strawberry cheesecake. And you guys, the creme brulee flavor was so spot on. It even has those little torch sugar pieces in between the ice cream. Like, god damn, it's so freaking sweet and eggy and creamy and just sensational. Then I tried the strawberry cheesecake and wow, the cheesecake flavor is right there. It's actually lighter than the creme brulee ice cream in my opinion. The flavor is not overwhelming and not too rich which is really good. And then I tried the lemon tart. Lemon tarts are usually very very sweet as is this one but it also has a very intense lemon flavor. The tart itself is already so sweet and the marina is just pure sugar and I don't really like that. The tart part is good. The cookie crust is really nice and crispy. But this tart is so rich. I wish I could have a sip of green tea or something right now. Finally, I tried the blueberry cheesecake. I think I accidentally picked the no sugar added one because girl, I can taste the sugar alcohol. You ain't fooling nobody. Like get out of there with your fake artificial sugary shit. It was still good though. I, it was a good, it was a solid piece of cheesecake. Not gonna lie. So for my sixth plate, I got some chips and guac, a piece of southern corn, and some steamed crab. The tortilla chips are like freshly fried and they're really really good with the guac. It feels so liberating to eat as much guac as you want without like, you know all the restaurants be like, Oh, extra two dollars for guac. Like, no, I can have as many guac as I want, bitch. You ain't stopping me from getting all the guac I want, okay? It's guac freedom, bitches. And then I try the southern corn and oh my gosh, it's so good. It's like the softest, butteriest corn and this savory cream sauce is like kind of messy to eat, not gonna lie, but it's so good. It's subtly sweet. Oh, it's delicious. All right, I gotta try some crab because I feel a little bad for skipping the seafood section entirely. I mean, crab is just crab. I'm not too into it, but it was good. For my final plate, I went back for some desserts, got myself a caramel pecan tart, a vegan passion fruit sago pudding, green tea cheesecake, Reese's mousse, and a s'mores bar. First, I tried the caramel pecan tart and oh my gosh, it was so sweet and intense. The rich caramel flavor is like overwhelming, it's like overpowering. That's all you can taste, it's just burnt sugar in this whole tart. It was so good, but it was so sweet. It's like sweeter than a freaking candy bar. <laughs> And then I tried the vegan passion fruit sago pudding and I was a little disappointed. The passion fruit popping boba on top was good, it was juicy, but the pudding is not the best. Like the texture is like rice pudding thickness, but the flavor is not there. I think it was mostly like I was expecting a certain kind of taste, but like I'm not getting it. So that's like where the disappointments held. And then I tried the green tea cheesecake and it's weird. It's not dense like a New York cheesecake, but it's also not fluffy like a Japanese cheesecake. The texture is more moist and light and a little bit jiggly. Like, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. I'm not a fan. And then I tried the Reese's Mousse and oh my gosh, this was probably the second best dessert I've tried other than a chocolate lava cake. It was so rich and you guys know I love my peanut butter. The highlight of this dish though was like super rich chocolate layer on the bottom. That was an intensely rich chocolate flavor. I don't know what it is about Bacchino but y'all got your chocolate game spot on. I regret not trying more chocolatey desserts, not gonna lie. Last but not least, I tried the s'mores bar and I personally love s'mores and this tastes exactly like a s'mores but it, like in a bar form. It was incredible but it was very very sweet. On top you got this fluffy and stretchy marshmallow with a rich chocolate shell in between. It was so freaking good like the texture and the flavor is oh it tastes like a summer vacation. Now at this point, I was so sugar loaded and the flavor fatigue is really hitting hard. I'm like 80% full. I could eat more for sure. But since everything is so intense and flavorful on its own, my palate is a little exhausted and overwhelmed. Plus it's also time to go because everyone else is done eating. So you gotta respect that and also respect the people who are waiting in line. But overall, I had an incredible experience today. I adore the Bacchanal Buffet and I highly recommend everyone to try it if you got the chance. So yeah, it was a good day, got lots of good food, and I think it's definitely worth the $80 to experience.
Aesthetic napkins. I just took a shower and while I was in there, I kept thinking about the Hokkaido milk tea I had earlier and it tastes exactly like those Japanese milk candies, like the milky ones. I'm not complaining because it's hella good, but anyways, because of all that sugar and shit, like I'm extremely inflamed right now. So many new acne on my face. I haven't had an acne breakout in so long, so this was a little uncomfortable, but you only get to experience spending these quality time every once a year so i'm okay with that and i'm learning to accept that thank you so much for watching this video guys be sure to give me a like if you like this video and i'll see you guys in the next vlog bye